and sex expert, Bunny. Hi, guys. I always crack up when he says that. That's just too funny. I'm pretty excited about today because we are doing a hot seat, just question and answer, full on. That's, that's what we're doing. So I'm excited about that because I get a lot of questions and, you know, it just seems like I always feel like if they're asking me a question, then I've got a ton more people who wish they'd ask that question or need an answer to the same kind of thing. So uh, I think that that's true of pretty much anyone who is kind of in this space and tends to have some answers. So we've got Fort Worth Playboy behind the scenes, being my producer, making me look good. Uh, it goes a long way. He has been fielding questions all week through the DMs, through YouTube, um, through everything, and uh, has compiled a nice little list. I'm only aware of a couple of them, so I really did kind of want to stay, um, stay unknowledgeable about what's coming my way because I just think that that way you can have a little bit more authentic experience. So I've got my little notepad and my pen, and I am ready to get going. All right. All right. So first question, there's a girl I like and have known for many years. We grew up together. She's exactly my type, plus she has no social media and no red flags. The problem is because we've known each other for so long, she only knows me as a dork. I've matured and improved my body a lot in the last two years. Has my chance with her sailed or can I still get her attention? Mm, okay. So the guy's a dork. They grew up together. He's not a dork anymore. He's improved. He's, he's matured. Um, and she's essentially, it sounds like his dream girl. I would say number one, are you sure she doesn't have any red flags? You know, guys can tend to to have really rose colored glasses or blinders on to the way women really are and how they really operate. So number one, you know, it sounds like there's a little bit of one-itis happening here in that you've got this girl on a pedestal and um, probably no one else is measuring up right now. Um, number two, I would say be bold because if this girl, if you've known her a long time, if you've grown up together, she only knows you one way as so-and-so's brother or, you know, the guy from church or whatever, it, whatever the case may be, you're going to have to be bold and make sure that she sees through your actions that you're not that guy. You know, you're not that dork like he's describing. So whether, um, whether that means just the, the aloof indifference, the extreme self-confidence, you know, I, I think that my my book, the instant self or uh, instant self confidence with women handbook, would be a really good twenty five steps towards self confidence with this girl. But mainly, I would suggest not ever mentioning your past, not not doing anything to kind of make it make reminders be known or thought about about when you were a dork. Think of her, you want her to think of you as you are now, as a grown man with grown man desires and uh, grown man confidence. So be bold, shoot your shot, and, and let the cards fall where they may. But I will say, the likelihood is she has some red flags. You're just not seeing them. So be cautious and don't have one-itis. A real, a real challenge for people. So I think it's a really great question. I think it's one that most people who have been together longer than even a year deal with. So if you've been in a relationship for a long time, if you're married or just or dating for a long period of time, I would suggest, number one, not talking about work um, because it just gets to be such a drab topic. And generally, unless she, unless she is particularly excited about what she does or is working on a big project or is doing something that really 
really blows her skirt up. It's just going to like remind her of her work to do list and what she has going and what she's trying to just unwind from for the from the diet. So I suggest number one, not talking about work if you can help it. That just drags conversations down, especially because you see these people every you see these this person every day, you see your wife every day. If you're always asking about work and that's really your only conversation point, it's gonna be, it's just, it's like pulling teeth. It's like dentistry. But I would say things that you can talk about that do keep things interesting is I suggest, hi, I suggest um, always being proactive in looking up things like articles or research or documentaries that maybe you've watched or would like to watch together. Something that kind of you at least can have an interest in and bring her along. So a lot of times, you know, Fort Worth will read a really interesting article um, and whether it's something that I'm kind of tuned into or not, his interest excites me. So it at least he, he can kind of say, oh yeah, I read this great article about orangutans in blah, blah, blah. And, either, and he starts talking about it. And that usually triggers me to say, oh, you know, I've been wondering about blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of creates conversation where there was blank space before. I think that's a really important thing to do in your everyday life with your with your person that you're living life with to keep conversation from being drab. So that works with research, it works with articles, it works with documentaries, it works even with movies that you've seen. Um, it's just a good way to keep things fresh and to keep the conversation going. If this is a real sticking point and if you are having trouble not only with communication but with just keeping life exciting and keeping sex exciting, of course, I have to remind you that this is the last week to register for Ignite Your Wife, my 30-day sexual reset course for the March 2023 uh, registration. So we'll be doing it again in October, but if you want to register for that real quick, feel free to hit that link. We've got all the things in the description box down below. Ah, and Fort Worth is, is on it. He's on it. What do you think? Next? Yes. Number three. Um, it's like the Johnny Carson thing. I know! Does running a marriage work the same way as a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship? Being aloof, cracking jokes, not taking everything too seriously, incredible sex, keeping intelligence and fitness in top shape. I feel like you answered your own question. You know, I always say, keep dating your wife. Don't ever stop dating. Whether you have been um, together for a long time or a short time, you're going to need to continue to put effort out. Because the bottom line is, if you break up with the person that you're with, you're going to be back out on the dating market. And you're going to put out effort to attract women, to date new women, to invite new women into your life, might as well just put that effort in right now. So yes, keep gaming your wife. Keep being aloof and indifferent. Keep teasing and keeping the, the fun going. Keep being a fun guy. Don't be so fucking serious that it just brings the energy of the whole household down. Keep dating your wife, keep fucking your wife, keep uh, doing all the things that you would do to put effort into uh, just continuing to enjoy being with her. And that goes for long-term dating or uh, a wife situation. But I definitely think that it's a critical key element to continue using all of the elements of game, even when you're in a long-term relationship. 1,000%. 1,000%. Next. <laughs> this how, is fun. How much do you charge for re retweets? <laughs> retweets. How much do I charge for retweets? Yes. I don't charge for retweets. Okay. <laughs> no, that is a funny question. And, 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 <laughs> and we do get some off-the-wall kinds of stuff sometimes. No, I, 
retweet stuff that comes in my purview and I think is funny or interesting or applicable or whatever. Yeah, you're going about it all wrong if you're asking how much I charge for retweets. That's funny. Okay. In what ways do you believe that the apps, Tinder, Hinge, yeah. Bumble, have changed dating? And it's interesting because you saw it before and after. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is a good point. So I think that the apps are really a great way to go for, I would say, 90% of men. I would say... You know, 90% of men can really benefit from being online, on the apps, online dating. My book, Magic, uh, Magic Bullet Online Dating Profile Handbook, is a great resource for this, for making sure that your app, your online um, dating profile doesn't look like a job application. It actually looks like something that speaks to the women you're trying to attract. However, what I do find is that men... And, and Playboy and I talk about this quite a bit. Men tend to view the dating apps in a way that uh, almost like you're trying to date online and forgetting the fact that the whole point of online dating apps is to pull them offline and get them in person. They're to set the date. And Playboy's um, what uh, your dating your, I suddenly went blank as to what it's called. The, the, the book about Magic planning. Bullet? Your, no, the book about planning the dates. Oh, um, your build, book. Your, build Your Dating build System. Build Your Dating System. I completely went blank on the name. Build Your Dating System is Fort Worth Playboy's plan that you can plug into your, your life. And it makes sure that it takes them from the app to to a date to your bedroom so it is a flawless uh, plan and you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time so I suggest using that if you have any problem with online dating the way that online dating has changed the dating scene is it gives you more options it gives you more holes in the water it's no different than fishing you're fishing for women and more often than not now I think that fewer of us are in especially post COVID, especially post COVID, fewer people are in an office, fewer people are attending events live, fewer people are um, in situations where they're naturally out there dating uh, or meeting women that would be worthy of dating. So you have to meet them somehow, might as well be this way because otherwise you have to work very hard to get out and meet new women, especially uh, with the efficiency and, and uh, lack of effort that it takes to manage, manage dating apps. So I would say more accessibility to more women that you desire. You can feel them a lot easier. It's not like you have to uh, attend a social event and, and try to figure out you know what these girls are like based on based on you know your gut instinct you actually can swipe and in the same amount of time it takes to to field one girl live you can field 20 girls online so it just I think it goes a long way in giving men a lot better options good yeah yeah should you believe women who say I'm not like that anymore I'm not that person anymore, or I don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. Um, you know, this is just standard. I would say this is just a standard issue thing. I think nine times out of ten, at some point, girls have gone through a hoe phase of some kind. Whether And, and that's more or less extreme, depending on the kind of girl it is and the, the way that she was raised and just kind of the atmosphere uh, it could just be her college years. It could be, you know, after a bad breakup. But I think a lot of girls, most girls, have in their uh, verbal repertoire that they aren't like that anymore, that they don't do that anymore, that, uh, you know, ooh, I used to do that, but I don't. It always reminds me of, um, and 
it, this, this article circulates all the time because it's so good. But Rollo Tomasi, the rational male, had a great article years ago that is still very applicable. Um, and it's talking about all I, I, I never can remember the name, but it, the picture is a girl sitting on a bed and there are like condoms on the wall, like all around. And it's like a disgusting picture. But the bottom line is it's talking about exactly this, that girls, you know, don't do this anymore or they don't do it uh, with their current lover, but they, it was something that they did in their young whole life, you know, that kind of thing. I've got it. Oh, thank you. Um, so Fort Worth is putting that link, the link to that article down below. Saving the best. That's what it was called. Great article. Check that out. But <coughs> whenever, whenever girls are going through this phase, I need you to remember if you hear this, any of these lines that were in this question, remember that all girls bend to the man that they are in front of right then. So if they're saying that to you, they're recognizing that you wouldn't like that, or they don't think that you would like that side of them. They wouldn't have necessarily, that you necessarily wouldn't have liked them during that time of their life, during that phase, and that they want to bring you a little bit different uh, version of themselves. Now that's assuming a lot because sometimes they could be referencing, you know, that they don't do blowjobs anymore and you're like, but I like blowjobs. So you have to be uh, direct with women and making sure that they understand what you like and what you expect. And then they can either stay on the bus or jump off if they, if it's something that they don't feel like they can do. Um, yeah. I think that a great way to understand women uh, in the best way possible, so you're checking out that Rollo Tomasi article, but also check out Chateau Hartis, uh, uh Fort Worth sells a bundle, which is truly the best of the best when it comes to understanding girl mindset and game and the way that uh, females operate in relation to the man that they're in front of. So check out the Best of Chateau Hartiste bundle. Uh, and I think that's a really good way to kind of better understand these kinds of comments that come from girls like, I'm not like that anymore. I don't do that anymore. And things like that. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I'm gonna they read all this, say it. I'm going to read this one verbatim because... <laughs> Uh -oh. I was talking to a girl who told me she had a body count of five when they all cream pied her. We all know body count matters, but could this girl be relationship material? I mean, this was important to this guy. So those that's the detail. They all cream pied her. All yes. five of them cream pied Apparently her. Apparently this was important to him because he included it. So it's not about just the number, it's about the act. So Okay. So <laughs> they all cream pied her. First of all, I would say, uh, what did you expect? Because the bottom line is, if a girl is having sex with someone, especially if they're dating on some level, do, do you guys like genuinely think that that girl, that guys don't come in her or come on her or come, come? I, I or come in the room. Come in the room. <laughs> I don't understand why that's the differentiation there that that there was a cream involved. It's, it seemed like a concern. It's a concern. I respect your concern. I'm not I'm not trying to make light of your concern. Um, the second part of that is, did he say five is the yes, number? Yes, five, five so guys before him. Five previous lovers. That's that's pretty fascinating to me because depending on the man you're talking to or the girl who's in front of you. Five could be really low or it could be really high. And clearly between the number five and the cream pie situation, clearly this is a high number. I would say in all seriousness that if you hear a number, first of all, oftentimes, just to be fair, oftentimes a girl will give a number that is not actually accurate. It's going to be lower than what 
uh, what it truly is because she's telling you what she believes you want to hear and she doesn't want to feel like a slut. But I want you to always um, remember and really understand that if whatever number she says bothers you in some way, you're not going to be able to get past it. So my best suggestion is if the number bothers you or if you can't get it out of your head that five previous guys have come before you, I suggest you just move on. No matter how great she is in other areas, no matter how hot she is, no matter how attracted you are to her, I, I honestly think that men can't get past things like that when they get locked in their heads. So I suggest yeah. if five cream pies before bothers you, you should probably you should probably move on because you're never going to not be able to see it. And likelihood is you're going to see it in the most inopportune times, like when you're having sex with her and all you can see is like come on her face or something like that. Like it's, it's genuinely that big a deal. So I want you to really think about it. If your number, if the number that she gave you is too high, I would say it's, I, I would think that that would be a deal breaker. Don't that's, you think? I mean, that sums it up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, like, you, like you said, if it bothers you, it's going to be on your mind a lot. Yeah. If it bothers you, it's not going to magically stop bothering you. No. Next. Do you have any unique tips or advice on how to eat a girl out? I do, actually. <laughs> you wrote a book. Uh, I wrote a book on it. Uh, what a great question. So, first of all, fuck like a porn star. It has a, um, a whole section in it on oral sex. And it's got a section for women and it's got a section for men. So, what I love about this book and my in particular experience in life and in writing the book and the, one of the reasons that I wrote it was because I've been with men and with women. And so not only do I know what feels really good from a female perspective of receiving oral sex, but because of that, I think it helps me better uh, to give oral sex. So yes, I do have some particular kind of tips and tricks. Um, off the cuff, I would say some of the things to, that, that men most likely fuck up about oral sex is on the giving on the giving side is that they focus too much on the clit there's a lot of nerve endings right there so i like to um compare it to if if you were given if you were being given a blow job as a man and all she's doing is licking and flicking the tip of your dick it would it would kind of be annoying it's kind of a lot of stimulation in one area um, it's it's similar for women and the clit action so I suggest doing more circular action a little bit more soft tongue uh, than or fingers than just like just poking at that thing because it's a lot of stimulation in a very tiny little area and it's literally the most um what like the most nerve endings of any part of a female body are all in that one area and i've heard like i think i read once that it's like eight thousand nerves in that one one little spot so ease up on the clit a little bit now you can, that doesn't mean that you can't be a little rough with it but I would suggest not, um, <laughs> I'm losing a lot of watchers right now. Go figure. Don't beat it up. And don't beat it up. Be, be a little bit more easy on it. The other thing that I suggest, and this goes for oral, for administ administering oral sex or even just penetration or sexual play in general, is if something is working, if your girl is responding, Keep doing exactly, exactly, exactly what you're doing. Don't change the pace, the tempo, the depth, the, 
the, the anything. Don't change anything. Because I believe that when men are starting to get aroused and starting to get close to orgasm, they, they want to push harder, go, go faster, you know, just kind of go after it. With women, what's working, what's working is working. If you change it, not only is it distracting to her, but it, it changes what's happening in her body. And so if you change what you're doing when she's about to come to orgasm, a lot of times it ruins the orgasm. We aren't able to fully come or not as completely. And so therefore, and this applies to this oral sex question, therefore, we might not enjoy it as much. We might want you to finish quicker. We may be done because we're like, eh, okay, that's all it is. And he ruins the orgasm every time because he changes the pace or the depth or whatever. So I suggest as far as oral sex specifically, play on more than just poking the clit. Don't be annoying with the, uh, with the clit. So, and then everything else sorts itself out. There you go. That's good. <laughs> that's a lot. All right. This is a longer question. All right. Okay. And I remember this one coming through. This question was asked right before Valentine's Day, but it really applies to all holidays where hot dates are expected. So it's definitely worth asking here for our listeners. I've been dating two girls, each for about a month, having sex once or twice a week with both, and I like them both. I don't know what to do about Valentine's Day. My instinct is to just make a snarky comment about each of them having to get in line to be my Valentine. Just a text, but not make any plans. What do you suggest? And this could apply anytime you're dating multiple girls. Yeah. Close to a holiday that gifting is required. Or, it's you know, true. Expected. It's true. This is a good question, and you're right. It definitely applies. Because girls want to, number one, they want to be the girl that you're wanting to take out on a date for a holiday, uh, for a typical date holiday, especially ones like Valentine's Day, Christmas, all of these things. New Year's. Um, any of these big date holidays, we want to have a date. Um, I would say, number one, something that stood out is the starkey comment thing. I, th I say, don't be an asshole. <laughs> you know, girls can are, are oftentimes okay with the, the underlying knowledge that you're dating more than one girl at a time, but we don't really like it rubbed in our face. That's not a sexy way to approach things. It doesn't make us excited about you or make us feel special. And all girls want to feel special, even if they know they're part of a rotation deep in their deep in their hindbrain. So I would say, no matter what, don't make a snarky comment because that kind of makes you sound like a kick the dog asshole. So don't do that. Um, number two, I would say um, that the best thing to do is it sounds like this guy kind of likes these girls pretty pretty similarly agreed yeah and they've been dating about the same amount of time and are having about the same experiences yeah so if if one is not a standout to you where she's kind of your main girl or the girl that you kind of think will be a better fit for kind of being your number one or your primary then just don't take either one of them out. You know, just kind of treat it like any other day. Don't reference that it's Valentine's Day. Don't wish them a happy Valentine's Day. Because these things actually point out that you know about it and that you're not taking them out. So, again, it's kind of a, a kick the dog asshole kind of thing. If you are like, oh, happy Valentine's Day, you know. Because then they think, oh, I'm not important enough to actually go out with. So don't do that. Thank you. Um, if you, in, and again, this applies to any of these normal date holidays. We're talking Valentine's Day because it just passed. If you do like one in particular or one is kind of your primary girl, take her out. Take her out for a standard issue Valentine's date. Whether it's dinner, whether it's dancing, whether it's just drinks, do something fun, have a fun date, and enjoy the benefits of 
of a girl who gets a date on Valentine's Day because it makes us horny, it makes us excited. We definitely will want to have sex. Everything about it is a win-win if you take a girl out for Valentine's Day or any kind of, um, of these date holidays. So if you like one girl in, in particular more than the others in your rotation, definitely take her out for a standard issue date. If you, no matter what uh, your kind of level of appreciation for the girls in your rotation is, if you see one of the girls, like as in you meet up and have sex with her, whether it's a date, but more like a during the day kind of uh, situation, if you happen to be meeting up with one of the girls in particular, or all of them in succession, on the actual day of the holiday, write her out a silly little handwritten card, roses are red, violets are blue, I'm gonna fuck this shit out of you, whatever it is, make, you know, poetry. poetry. Make a stick figure, whatever it is. Make it goofy. Don't buy a card. Don't put effort out. Don't buy roses. Don't do any of these things. Just one piece of paper with a marker and, and call it good and give it to her. But that's only if you're seeing her anyway. Otherwise, don't even reference the fact that it's a holiday, okay? Because then, again, it points out that, that you could have had plans with her, but you didn't. You must have plans with someone else or you're just a kick the dog asshole. So I say um, don't reference the holiday if you're not actually seeing the girl for the holiday. Ready for the next question? I'm ready for the next question. This okay. is fun. Are and you this, guys having a good time? And this is one that we've seen since we've started doing coaching. Yes, I'm a girl. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm doing. I get a lot of... Yeah, Are you really this is the number two question that we probably get. Okay. So, do you have any suggestions for a guy who has an issue during sex with getting overly excited and coming too quickly, which is basically premature ejaculation? Yeah, yeah. Your answer. Okay. Um, you know, just a few weeks ago, I saw uh, a little video clip that Sterling Cooper, who is an actual ex-porn star... Uh, had put up on Twitter from an interview with a girl that he had and he talked about it and I thought this was genius he talked about that when he would be in a scene and didn't want to come too quickly or you know really need to stretch things out the way that I'm sure they have to for for all the the porn stuff to be clipped together is he would start counting the ceiling tiles I say anything that you can do to kind of distract yourself. Uh, what's that scene from the movie where he's like, he's uh, one guy says that he's like uh, Margaret Thatcher on a cold day, Margaret Thatcher on a cold day. And he's like got his eyes clipped. It's kind of the same thing. It's funny. He didn't want to be aroused. He didn't want to, you know, his arousal to go over the top. So he was distracting himself with other things. I think the best way to handle this. Me being a girl, talking talking to men about premature ejaculation. I think the best way to avoid it is to change things up a little bit. So change positions, maybe uh, toss her into position uh, that isn't as arousing to you. So you can kind of change what is in your visual. Because a lot of things that make us come are more than just the sensation of sex, but also the visual eye candy that we're seeing at the time. So change things, you know, up so that you're just not getting as aroused. And, you know, I think that that will help a lot. Uh, one guy that that um, I've been with before, who was clearly a very, very excited, he would pull out and he would start eating me. And then he would go back, but it was almost, it was almost comical in the way it was happening because it was so clear what he was doing that he was trying to avoid coming. So anything that you can do to distract yourself, whether it's carrying the ceiling tiles, whether it's just changing things up and making things maybe less arousing to you, but continuing the sex act and the sex play is a great way to elongate, elongate your excitement without 
going over the edge. And you know what? I would say, I would say, if you come fast, that's actually a kind of a compliment to us. So don't ever think that you have to stretch the the first sexual round out a long way because really, if you want to, if you go balls the wall and you're fucking us into a puddle and fucking us like it's your last fucking ours. And it's exciting, and we're both coming like freight trains, and you, you know, you come and you you finish, you know, snuggle, recover, kiss a little bit, get it going again. Because the second time, don't you guys last longer like the second time if you kind of get back in there? So, you know, it's just a win-win. And then even if even if you came fast in, in your perspective the first time, Getting back in there, we never think anything of it. So make no mistake, even if you have a, an issue with premature ejaculation, that doesn't have to be uh, a kiss of death. So keep going. Or if you know that you don't recover quickly, uh, and so you know maybe getting back in there within five or 10 minutes isn't really an option for you, then do what you can to distract yourself, different positions, count ceiling tiles, whatever you need to do to, to stretch things out a little bit. That's what I say. All right. This is, um, this is one that came through on your, on your end. So, Hey buddy, let's say you find a guy attractive enough to invite him into your bed, but it has erectile dysfunction. It may or may not get hard, but he can still make you come with his fingers or tongue. If it doesn't get hard, would you have preferred knowing he had erectile dysfunction before trying to fuck, or should he keep quiet? Yeah, and I, I thought that this one was a good one to add because I do feel like, especially with um, what the, the generations of men that we, that we deal with a lot, I feel like it's probably more prominent of an issue than, than we like to talk about. Um, so if you have a little bit of erectile dysfunction or if it's unpredictable whether you're going to get hard and it doesn't really matter your arousal rate sometimes or um, your arousal level, sometimes it just doesn't happen for everyone. Health concerns, whatever it might be that causes it. So I say, especially with a new lover or a new partner, um, don't tell a girl ahead of time that you that you may or may not get hard because then um, most girls won't find that a challenge you know there's a there's a level of playfulness where uh, you can kind of get a girl to want it to be a challenge like oh well you know I can make you hard right now or, you know, you could be like, oh, my dick's exhausted. There's no way I could get a hard on right now. That we take as a great challenge. Uh, you telling us ahead of time before we've ever had sex that you have erectile dysfunction issues is not the same. Uh, so it's less sexy. The better way to handle it would be to jump in there, have sex play, do what you're able to do. Maybe, maybe your dick pops up for the for the occasion maybe it doesn't but either way just give her the time of her life and make sure that she's really enjoying things and likelihood is she may not even notice as much especially if you have toy play if you can do penetration of other kinds um i suggest just kind of if you know this could be a an issue have an arsenal ready so that you can still give both of you a lot of pleasure. You still enjoy the sexual connection with the girl, the intimacy. Um, but, and then, you know, maybe next time when the stress isn't as high of a new performance or when the connection's a little bit tighter with the girl because you, you know her a little bit better, then maybe you're relaxed enough to where your dick cooperates a little bit better. But I, do you think, do you think, can you think of anything that I might be missing with that? No. Okay. I, it's a tough question. It is a tough question. And it's, it's certainly one that plenty of men deal with. Uh, but I suggest 
not letting people know ahead of time, not letting new partners know ahead of time that you may or may not have an erectile dysfunction issue if you jump in there. Next! You ready? Okay, so this one came through my, my um, DM. When she says she wants only a serious relationship or nothing, what do you do? Oh, okay. You see this all over the place on, on online dating. It is rampant that like for men and women's sides, you know, LTRs only, only serious, you know, relationship, blah, blah, blah. Let me just tell you that that is a terrible thing to do. And it should be something that you just go, oh gosh, just ignore it. Because all people, most people, most women especially, go into dating with the idea that they want to find that the next person that they date is going to be the last person that they date. But putting that kind of like long-term pressure on the first few dates is really setting you up for failure because you need to just go into every first date with the kind of mindset that if this works out, then we'll have a second date. If that works out, we'll have a third date. Maybe in a few years, I'll be like thinking, I could maybe marry this person. Or, you know, I could picture having a family with this person. But until you get there, it's a terrible idea to put that kind of pressure on a new relationship or someone that you're just meeting. So I think it's an unfair thing to do, but men and women are both equally guilty, I would say, of doing it. Once you get in front of a new girl, if you're a player, if you're trying to run a rotation, if, and as you're getting to know this new girl, maybe you've gotten her out on a date uh, or, or a couple of dates, and she's kind of getting wind that she's probably not the only one or that you're, you know, clearly running, running a couple of different girls or at least still trying to date other girls. And then she says, I only want something serious. I only want a serious relationship. That's kind of her way of saying, this isn't for me. You're a great guy. I know for myself, I can't do this though. And that's giving, that's kind of putting it in your court to whether you're either going to say, you know, I really kind of dig this chick enough to date just her for right now. You can always break up. Make no mistake. Even if you decide to give a girl a try um, in, in more of a monogamous way, you can always break up. That's the easy part. So, you know, if, if she says, I only want serious relationships and you're clearly running a rotation, you can either opt to say, I've really enjoyed knowing you. It's been fun. We've had a lot of fun. You know, let me know if you change your mind or you can say, you know, I'd like to give that a try. I, I think you're pretty fucking fantastic. We always have a good time and you know, you're a neat girl. So I'd like to, to do a little bit more with you. So what are you doing on Sunday night? You know, that kind of thing. Next question. Next question. It's similar. Um, and it was from the chat board, and I did not Ooh. get your name. A couple of gentlemen, I got your questions, didn't get your name, so I apologize. Question. So I'm a player, and I've been with a girl for a while, but she won't stick around anymore unless we're seriously committed. But she likes me a lot. Is she calling my bluff? I do not want to date. Yeah. You have to know yourself. Um, and you have to know what you want and what your expectations are. I think the most important thing there is you do not want to date. So it's kind of similar to the previous question, you're right, in that you have to know what you want and you have to know um, whether she's going to fit that or not. If she's kind of gotten to the point where she's not going to to fit your lifestyle any longer because she's really pushing for more. She's, she's making her exit. Um, and I think it's only fair to, to say, I don't have any interest in, in dating just one woman. I really enjoy my life as it is. I've enjoyed having you in it, but I understand if, if, if you want something more serious, that's not something I can give you though. That's normal. Yeah. Right. Girls are going to come and go. Yeah. yeah. 
it's just part of it's part of being, being a player and running a rotation. Next, great question. This is very very general, but maybe you can you can tell us why better. <laughs> I'm looking for an actual girlfriend. Any tips or advice? Well, I wrote or I put together a bundle specific to this because um, it's dating. It's called Dating with a Purpose Bundle. And it is specifically because there are guys who say, I don't want to run a rotation. I don't want to be a playboy. I just want a girlfriend. I want a girlfriend. I want to look for a wife. I want something serious. I kind of just want some steady sex and I'd be happy. So I did put together, it's a collaboration with Fort Worth, the Dating with a Purpose bundle. He'll find that, that link and put it down below. Um, but the best tips are still to approach it more like you're running a rotation. I know that's not exactly what you want to hear, but the bottom line is if you aren't trying to be a serial dater, which means you're dating one person at a time, if you try to kind of talk to multiple girls Run, date a couple of girls in succession at the same time, it gives you a better viewpoint of how girls are, are reacting to, to this specific time of your life and the way you are right now. Instead of having rose-colored glasses about some girl from your past who maybe happened upon you at a really good time of your life or negative things about someone, you need a situation where you have an abundance of girls who you're at least talking to, preferably getting in front of you and dating and doing a little bit of life with so that you can discern what you really are looking for, for a girlfriend or potential life partner and how each of these girls really stack up against one another. It's just the best way to really look for what you want. So whether you are looking for a girlfriend or a wife, or you're looking to be more of a player or a playboy, the best way to do it is to run a rotation of some kind. And it doesn't have to, when, when we talk about running a rotation, it doesn't have to be eight girls that you're trying to juggle and manage and trying not to, not to drop any balls. It could be two or three girls. So we find that the ideal is about three, uh, what is what is the rule? Two is one, three is two, you know, that kind of thing. So I just suggest even if you're on the hunt for a girlfriend or something more serious, don't date as if you are on the hunt for a girlfriend or something more serious. And then let let that, you know, rotation of some level kind of narrow down to one. Perfect. Great Will question. Francis, Will Francis, what's played... What's Bunny's theory about nice sixes in the suburbs? So think of affluent fives, but probably a step up. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or, you know, a step over. Nice sixes in the suburbs. Well, we've talked about this. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think that, can you, f probably you can't find our affluent fives uh, message or podcast while you're on. But yeah. let's let's add that here in a little bit. We will. Um I'd say that my take on sixes in the suburbs is they're fours in the city and eights in the country. I mean, literally, it's kind of like a girl next door. She's pretty enough. She's, you know, nice enough. She's pleasant enough. And a lot of times, sixes are kind of a happy number because they're not attractive enough not to have to try. So they still try, they still want to please you and be agreeable, but they also are used to having a, generally having a pretty nice life because they're attractive enough that they've had a nice little upbringing, they uh, get a lot of, you know, perks of being at least relatively attractive and getting a lot of attention. So, you know, they are used to male attention and um, and dealing with that. So I think uh, sixes in the suburbs, which may be a podcast topic because I just yeah. like, it just flows. 
Um, I think six is in the suburbs. If you can find one who really, you know, kind of attracts you and you believe could be a fun girl to either date in a rotation or what do you say? Age spread. Oh, that's a good, yes, that's an important point is that um, I would suggest six is in the suburbs. You still, uh, still abide by the 10-ish year age gap if you're over the age of 35. So, you know, if you're 20 years old, no, we don't recommend a 10-year a year, year age gap. Don't Weirdos. be weird. <laughs> Weirdos. But if you're, as a male, 35 or above, we definitely recommend um, about an average of 10-year age spread. So for the younger guys, that would be more like maybe 8 to 12 years. And the older you get, if you're in your 70s, 80s, then absolutely maybe upwards of 20 years is great for you as well. So just kind of, I would, I would, I'm glad you brought that up, Fort Worth. So affluent or sixes in the suburbs and with an age spread of some kind. You don't want to be dating your peers. That is a recipe for disrespect and disaster. So I think that sixes in the suburbs is a really great, great way to go. And if you date her, if you marry her, if you have children with her, generally those genetics are strong and good enough that you pass on some really good, um, really good qualities to your children and your families. If you go out in the city, no one looks down on someone who's dating a six because she's still an attractive, pleasant person to be around. Uh, if you go out into the country, you're like Hugh Hefter walking around with, with your arm candy at your, you know. So it's it's really, I think, a pretty pretty sweet spot to be in. Next. We're just working our way up the uh, age ladder. So Jeff Erno said, advice for dating postmenopausal women. I think that's a, a good question. You know, what, that's 45, a big, 50? That's a big problem. Um, so... Postmenopausal women, I've, I've talked a lot about this on the kind of on the back side of Twitter uh, and in dealing with clients. The bottom line stuff to remember is menopause doesn't last forever, thank God. Um, I mean, the, the attitudes that come out, the, the discomfort that she's feeling, the anger, the absolute hormone fluctuations that will just destroy her attitude and mood doesn't last forever usually it's it's about three years so just know that while she's going through it you may not recognize the woman in front of you and it's rough it's essentially like girls who are say 16 13 to 16 going through, you know, getting their period and the, the hormonal fluctuations that are happening and then happening then. They're hormonal shit shows. So there's tears, there's anger, there's discomfort. She's never happy. It's miserable. And I feel for you guys, I feel for anyone going through this. Um, and I feel for you on the back side of it to an extent. A lot of guys with the right kind of control in their lives and the right frame once the wife gets through menopause and gets to the other side of the the hard fluctuation of hormones a lot of times to an extent you get your wife back if you maintain the power and control and frame throughout the relationship so it kind of you kind of have to play like you have to play the long game if you've, if you've been gaming your wife, then keep gaming your wife. If she's being an asshole for three years because she's going through menopause, know that it won't last forever. And as long as you maintain your frame, you're a lot more likely to get her back on the other side. Now, on the other side of menopause is you're kind of left with a different version of the same person. So she's probably going to experience uh, a little bit more discomfort during sex. Lubes are a great option for this. Um, 
I feel like a lot of men and women alike kind of have a, a negative viewpoint on sex loops. And I think that's a dirty shame because even girls who are naturally very wet, even girls in the prime of their lives who are, um, who get plenty aroused to, for sexual lubrication, even when you're at your peak, more lube is always better. The wetter the better, it just makes everything feel better and it prevents any kind of dry spots because we have a lot of inside spots that can get dry. So no matter how uh, aroused we are, there are still possibilities to kind of hit a dry spot now and then. So make no mistake that no matter where you are on the age uh, spectrum, lube is a good thing to have on hand. So just kind of test them out. If you don't already have a favorite, I don't like to suggest specific lubes uh, because really it's up to what you like best and what works best. I would say go to the store, buy three different kinds, throw them away if you don't like them. As, as you know, don't try and use up a bottle because it costs you a whole eight dollars. Throw it away. If you don't like it, if it doesn't work for you, get rid of it. That way you never use it again and have another bad experience. On the other side of menopause, to get back to the actual question, um, you're going to have someone who maybe uh, has discomfort with sex. So you do what you can with lubrication to continue to make sex pleasurable so that she'll continue to want to have sex. Because if sex is uncomfortable, it's hard to get excited about it. So as long as we do things that make her more comfortable and make her enjoy the pleasures of sex more, the more likely you are that you'll still have a strong sexual connection even post-menopause. The other side of this is post-menopause. A lot of times you have a little bit drier sense of humor. So girls kind of have a tendency to just kind of be almost, it, I think the best way to describe it is they're a shell of the person they once were. That can be cured as well through game, through your strong frame, through continuing to date and, uh, and show interest in your wife. And um, I lost the third question because I saw some questions, some comments pop up. <laughs> I know, I'm like, oh God, I just lost my train of thought. Um, this, this is the, the only downside to, or the only yeah. risk in live performances, right? Um, if you continue to game your wife, a lot of times she will be more apt to uh, at least attempt to be more pleasant to be around. I do suggest making sure that postmenopause women have some sort of hormone uh, replacement therapy running. So get her hormones checked. Go with her to the doctor. Make sure the doctor, her physician knows that your sexual connection and your marital bed and her attitude are all being affected by this. And you want your relationship back. You want it to be strong even post-menopause. So go to her, go with her to the doctor so that she can't sugarcoat the way she's feeling and you can make sure that it's clear that this connection is important to you and it affects both of your quality of life. So I think all of those apply to postmenopausal women and the men who love them. Do you have time for one more question? Why not? Bring okay. it, baby. Okay, Jay Smith, currently in nursing school, which is actually a good environment to meet a girl due to all the diversity. Yeah. I've been a player before, but looking for a girlfriend now. Any tips or specific advice? I would say specifically be a player again. At least for, you're welcome, Jeff. At least for a short time. Have the mindset that you had when you were more of a player because an abundance mindset goes a long way in attracting women. And girls talk. So you're in an environment as a male in nursing school where you're surrounded by women and whether they're like, I fucked him, it was amazing, or 
I heard he dates a lot of girls or whatever. These that actually arouses women more than it should. <laughs> and it's true. Like the guys love to tell you that it's true, but from a female perspective, a girl can be like, "Oh, I dated him and then I didn't hear from him for 2 days." And they're they're trying to be real pissy about it. And they're trying to deter other women from wanting to date him. <laughs> and instead, the girl who she's talking to is like, I bet I can get him to call me sooner. And it's a challenge. It's Girls do this to each other all the time and think that it's going to deter us when actually it turns us on. So my best suggestion as a male in nursing school surrounded by women is talk to them all. Even the ones that you're not attracted to, even the married ones, whatever it is, talk to everyone, flirt with everyone. Don't let it deter you from your mission of school. Don't let it interfere with making good grades. I just want to be clear. I want you to get, to, to get that nursing degree. But go into, even as you're seeking something more serious, go into it with more of a player mindset run a bit of rotation if you uh, need to, but mainly since you have the experience, you can turn on that player charm and then you can really, especially with your uh, constant interaction with all these women, you're probably uh, learning pretty quickly who would be a really genuine, good, genuinely good fit for you. But talk to everyone, practice on the ugly ones, uh, make everyone feel like uh, the the only girl in the room when you're talking to her, and you will inevitably uh, reignite that player mindset and attract a lot of girls. And then, if you want to date one specifically, awesome. She'll be right there and ready. That's it, baby. That's it? I love it. Oh, my gosh. Guys, thank you so much for all of the questions. That was over an hour of question and answer and that's exactly what I was most wanting because I get a lot of great questions we we both do um, but I think especially oh Leandro has a question he says I had one and he's crying about it we've got to answer his question Le I thought I got it. did we get it Leandro we're looking he says looking. I have one question that I probably know the answer Oh, okay. For let go and move on, but I'd like an external perspective. Okay. Hold on. I don't see the question, though. Leandro, if you have your question, we'll, we'll answer it. We, we have no place to be, baby. Come on, bring it. Um, I will say, while we're waiting for that question, um, or waiting to find the question, uh, maybe it's in the comments. Instead of the chat, he says below. Oh. Maybe. I can't see it. This is the last week to register for the March 2023 Ignite Your Wife course. If you are in a long-term relationship, um, please, uh, if you're suffering from a low sex drive or a low sexual attraction, it will ruin your life. It will cost you a marriage, it will cost you the quality of your life, it will cost you a relationship, it will destroy families, it will destroy the, the parents that your kids are being raised with. If you are having an issue where the sex has dried up or become practically non-existent, I can help. This is what I do, this is my passion, is helping guys have more sex and enjoying a higher, higher quality of life. So if you're in that situation, for, for about the amount that your wife is spending every day at Starbucks, for 30 days, you and I can be in cahoots getting you to ignite your wife again. And this is not you uh, bringing roses home every day. This is not about you tripping over your dick to please her or do extra chores. None of that. It is none of that. It is everything uh, that works in game, in uh, making sure you're primed and making sure that she is uh, truly softened and and reignited sexually uh, for the rest of your life. So um, 
So 30 days sexual reset. Ignite your wife, March 2023. Uh, that, that registration ends this week. So if you want to get on board, this will be the only time that, uh, that this is available at the price that it is. Did we find Leandro's question? Let's find out. Okay, here we go. Oh, good. I have an ex that is entangled with a dude, but she's still giving me a opening for sex and hinted about going back. I would like to snatch her back. Not worth it. If worth it, how to take her back? My question is from you two. That's, that's a really common problem. Um, so... First and foremost, I always say, um, are you sure you want her back? I know you think you want her back, but I need you to really consider what broke you up in the first place. Because whatever broke you up, within about a week of being reunited uh, officially, those same problems are going to come back and only escalate from there. It never starts back at zero. So whenever we take an X back, the problems never start back at zero. They start back at just below they were where they were when you broke up. So the problems are still there. Likelihood is absolutely nothing about what broke you up has been fixed or changed. So just know that. And it may be that you wanna be back with her because you kinda of go, the problems that we had weren't really that bad. I, I would have handled it better now. And I can handle, I can deal with whatever. I would love those problems back. Because I know that, you know, relationship in uh, the real world or other girls have actually been different problems, worse problems that I don't want to put up with anymore. So if this girl that you uh, used to be with that is kind of a fuck buddy-ish now but is actually kind of hung up on another guy. If you want her back and you feel like she's kind of just waiting for your sign that, you know, you'd be open to that. Um, if you're okay with dealing with the problems that broke you up before and more, <laughs> and then some, then go for it. <coughs> I, I don't ever recommend taking an ex back. I don't think it's a good idea. The other concern I have is if, even if she's giving you signals and cues that she would like to be back with you uh, in a more official way, if she's still officially hung up or dating another man, you have to understand that you're uh, the monkey branch. You know, you're the, the dick that she wants to make sure she has a hold of before she lets this other one go. And... All women do it to a certain extent. We've actually done a podcast. Podca I like podcast. I'd like to try that. A podcast on that just a few weeks ago. So know that uh, you can kind of dig into that for a little bit more research on monkey branching. But if she doesn't want to let go of him until she's sure that you're on board with the idea, that means that you're second fiddle. If you're okay with being second fiddle to uh, another man, that's on you also. And that's a decision that you have, to, uh, you have to weigh for yourself. Every once in a while, couples will cheat on their spouses or significant others, which is essentially what she's talking about doing and what she's doing. Um, and it actually works out for the best for everyone involved. Every once in a while, the cheating people get together. They have the best life ever. We actually have a couple of friends who recently got married. It wasn't the best of circumstances that got them together, but they're truly the best couple to be together. So every once in a while, even a blind squirrel finds a nut. So I'm not telling you that uh, this girl that you are thinking about inviting back uh, more permanently isn't a great fit for you. I'm just saying, don't go into it blind. Go into it understanding that the problems that broke you up are still there. And you are a second choice right now. So if you're okay with both of those things, more power to you. Bravo! Thank you guys so much for the questions. Thank you to Fort Worth for fielding all of your questions. It's been um, 
it's been a lot of fun doing this. I can't even believe that um, that this is just happening. I'm enjoying myself. I hope you guys are too. Thank you for the longest episode, the longest bro sure. live broadcast that we've done yet. Uh, and bravo to Fort Worth for all that you do to make me look good. So okay. thank you so much. Please uh, check out all of the links to uh, all the ways to reach us, the products that we offer, the consoles that we offer, and just all the places to find Fort Worth and I in the comments section down below. Keep the questions coming. We will continue to answer them, and I appreciate you tuning in. Bye! Ha, 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 ha.